welcome back to my channel. I'm James, and today we're going to be discussing and reviewing kind of one of these really underrated and, I mean, heck, when I went and saw it in theaters, it was really an empty theater when it originally came out back in 2014. But it was kind of one of those movies that kind of went way under the radar, and a lot of people were kind of confused by the marketing of it, confused by the name of it. Heck, they've had numerous names for it. But today I'm excited to announce we're going to deep dive into edge of tomorrow or live die repeat and it is kind of one of those things that i don't quite understand why people didn't really like the original name and then they had to name it the second thing and now they're renaming it back to edge of tomorrow because people didn't understand the live die repeat it's kind of one of those really confusing marketing things overall but tom cruise emily blunt it's a doug lyman directed film and it is one of those kind of like groundhog day sci-fi in my opinion classic i really love the universe that they built in this film i think the character development the story is so well done and it's done on one of these like i said groundhog day type things where literally the name live die repeat uh basically sums it up but you learn along the way and it builds this great world and you get really wrapped up in the characters i mean tom cruise is great in it emily blunt's great in it there's a bunch of supporting cast that's great in it special effects were great in it too so it's one of these that i was really excited to get on 4k and do all of my exclusive testing I'm gonna share all of that data and things that I found out when I did all my testing. And I'm gonna show you my exclusive 4K versus the original Blu-ray release image comparisons. And that's something that if you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know that I do that a lot on a lot of these brand new 4K releases. So it shows you for yourself what the differences are between this new 4K and the original Blu-ray release, and if it's something worth spending your money on and upgrading to. And then at the end, as always, I'll wrap it up with my review score and let you know if this is something that you should spend your money on and how this actually comes out in comparison to all the hundreds of other 4Ks I've reviewed over the years. Now to start off with, I'm going to show you this original Blu-ray image presentation up above here. Now, as always, this is the unfiltered image that is off of these discs. I pull them directly from the discs. So what that means, as always, is this is without all the stuff your TV can do to pump up color, saturation, things like that. So that's the native image that's on these discs. Now in comparison to the 4K Ultra HD, obviously this is the native image off the 4K discs here. There are some appreciable increases in detail and there was a lot of things I noticed where the colors looked better and the dark to lights definitely had much more contrast between that where the inky blacks really looked good on it. Though I will say in some of the darker scenes on the 4K Ultra HD disc, it did just, just slightly be a little bit harder to see than it was in the original Blu-ray release, just slightly. Now, it's not so heavy that it wasn't enjoyable. If you're watching it in a dark room anyways, then the 4K definitely looks good even in those dark scenes that were scattered throughout just briefly. Uh, but there was a few that I did feel like the Blu-ray was just more grayed in those areas, so maybe you could just slightly see some more. But again, that's me being nitpicky for all of you as I always am here on the channel. But uh, I didn't like the grayish look overall better in the Blu-ray in those scenes, but overall the 4K did look good overall through the entire image. I was surprised as far as this goes though because it's not a native 4K 2160p. This is an upscaled 4K from a 2K digital intermediate. And as most of you know that have watched this channel for a while, a lot of the times if those aren't done correctly, they cannot look as good on a 4K as compared to the previous Blu-ray. But in this case, I will say this one is one of those really good looking 2K upscales to 4K that did show a drastic increase in details, clarity, and a bunch of other things like skin tones and like their armor when they're wearing. You see so much more damage on the armor and dirt when it would spray up from explosions that had so much more lifelike details to it that just weren't present on the Blu-ray that are present on this 4K. Now, if you're new to the channel, make sure to go down there and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. And make sure to give this video a like and thumbs up as well. Now, if after you get done watching this review and hearing my review score, you decide you wanna pick this up and add this to your collection. I've done all the work for you and I've included the links from Amazon directly in the description section right below this video and as a pinned comment. You click on that down there, it takes you straight out to Amazon at no extra cost to you. It's the same price everywhere and you click on that, it'll ship it to your home from anywhere worldwide. So I've done all that work for you and made it nice and easy for you that if you do decide to pick this up, Make sure to go down to one of those links I posted in either the description section or as a pinned comment. Now on the 4K Ultra HD, it does have HDR10, 
which I was a little surprised that it had HDR10 instead of like Dolby Vision or HDR10 Plus. Now, the HDR10 does look good, but I would have liked to have a couple more options. I would have liked to have that Dolby Vision option or even the HDR10 Plus. I do think HDR10 Plus looks even better than HDR10, but the HDR10 did look good. I just would have liked to have seen what it would have looked like with those extra options in it, but it's simply something Warner Brothers didn't do for this release. And my understanding is it is kind of one of those test ones that Warner Brothers put out. And here's what I mean. Because originally in theaters, it didn't do well. At the beginning of this video, I talked about when I went to see this in theaters back in 2014, I went in and there was nobody in that theater with me. And it was opening weekend. I remember going in, it was a Friday. It was literally me and like two other dudes sitting randomly across in the theater. That was it. And it was one of those films that I really was disappointed that didn't get more support. Now, it's kind of grown in cult status and more and more people have watched it and learned to appreciate just the world it built. And they've talked about for years, I mean, heck, Emily Blunt just recently talked about it, so did Tom Cruise, about doing a sequel to this that really the world's so well built, I want to see a sequel to it. But originally it wasn't that successful, so I really feel like Warner Brothers is putting this out testing the waters with this 4K to see if it sells well enough to then warrant them doing a sequel to it. And that's really why I believe Warner Brothers chose this to do a new 4K on it and to release this in 4K. So that's kind of a little hidden tidbit. If this does sell well enough, we might see a sequel to this coming up very soon. Now, good news is it is presented in its original aspect ratio, 2.39 to 1. Warner Brothers did not cut it down from the original aspect ratio at all for this 4K release, so that's good news. Now, talking about the audio, the audio is one area in this that I was very happy with what Warner Brothers did. Now, as always, there's always going to be people that say, hey, I didn't like it as much this way or liked it better the other audio mix. Well, here's the thing. If you have a reference audio system and you're using something that's actually a Dolby Atmos reference audio system, and I've done previous videos on this before on the YouTube channel, that if you want to get into reference Dolby Atmos systems, things like that, I've done some comparison videos of different audio systems and things I've tested out and shared with you some of the best ones that are available for you to get. So if you do want to check that video out, it is available on my YouTube channel. It kind of gives you some hints, tips, and tricks. Things I've learned along the way about different audio systems, I've tested out dozens of them. Well, if you have a nice audio system, this Dolby Atmos track on this, the English Dolby Atmos, is really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Over the previous audio mix that was on that Blu-ray, this, in my opinion, blew away the previous Blu-ray release and made this an upgrade just for the audio track alone. I mean, honestly, the opening scenes with the bombs and the subwoofer kicking in and things like that is used so well with lows to highs that you really feel it. And if you have a low end sound system, be careful because I have heard of people blowing out their audio systems with the audio track on this because their subwoofer couldn't handle the lows and the highs going back and forth. Now. I haven't had that happen, but there are some things out there saying that it's happened to some people. But in my case, it sounded absolutely great. I thought the Dolby Atmos track on this was absolutely a stunner and really made the film come to life even so much more than the previous Blu-ray. And in my opinion, that was the price of admission right there for this release, let alone that the image looked better. Now, if you don't have a Dolby Atmos system to play through, you do get a really nice English True HD 7.1 and an English Dolby Digital 5.1. So you get several different options that basically Warner Brothers didn't leave you hanging. You get several different options for the audio tracks on this as well. Now, you also get a bunch of other audio mixes for other languages. You get a DTS HD Master Audio 7.1, French and German in that. And then for Dolby Digital 5.1, there's about 13 other audio mixes, Italian, Spanish, Chinese, and tons of others that you can choose from on that. So basically no matter where you live worldwide, you'll be able to play this and watch it in any language you want. So that's a nice thing. Now for those of you that need subtitles, this does have all your subtitle options on it. It has your English, your French, your German, your Italian, your Spanish, your Chinese, plus 15 other languages that you get for subtitles as well. So again, they didn't leave you hanging with subtitles either. Now showing you real quick what you get in this. Now it does come with a slip cover in these first printings. It does say Edge of Tomorrow and Live, Die, Repeat on it. So like I said, they put both titles of the movie because of the whole retitling and then going back to the original title. Um, on the back, it does talk about special features that you get on it. You do get a digital movie code from movies anywhere as well. Now, when you get inside here, 
You do have your 4K Ultra HD disc printed in black. Then you get your digital copy codes and things here. And then this is your original Blu-ray disc. It's not any different than the Blu-ray disc that came in my original Blu-ray set. Now on the 4K Ultra HD disc, I have some great news. I love BD100s. Well, Warner Brothers didn't skimp. They did put it on a BD100, so plenty of room for the content on it. I do appreciate when companies do that and don't try to cheap and put a smaller disc on it. But you get a BD100 and I did my testing on it. It is region free. So no matter where you live worldwide, you can play it. They didn't region lock it at all. It is region free. Now on your Blu-ray, it is on a BD50. I did test this as well, and this one is region free as well. So if you decide to buy it through the link I've posted down below, it'll ship anywhere worldwide, and both discs are 100% region free no matter where you live worldwide. You won't have any issues playing or accessing either of the movies or the special features on either of the discs. Now talking about the image just a little bit more, I wanted to touch on a couple of things. Now the image on here has a very nice and very fine layer of natural grain on it. That produces a very film-like image when you're watching it. So I did like that it did retain that, which is more present and noticeable on this than it ever was on the Blu-ray originally. So I like the more filmic look, and that was a nice upgrade that I noticed on the 4K Ultra HD that I never really picked up on that Blu-ray. So I did like that you could see that and it brought more life to the film and just made it look, in my opinion, so much better overall without being too heavy. And there wasn't fluctuations throughout. It was just very fine, stable layer throughout the entire film that I did like that added bonus that was showing up in the 4K as well. Another big bonus on the 4K Ultra HD disc, when I tested it, it had a very high average bit rate, which to me makes a big difference when you're watching the film. That's what adds to like the stability of the image, the nice details behind it. It's showing so much more of the data that's coming through. Well, the average bit rate was hovering right around 80 megabits per second. So it was very nice that it had that nice average bit rate throughout the entire film. Now the movie is pretty fast paced. It runs about 113 minutes and it's very similar like to a lot of these Groundhog Day. And I recently did the review for Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to You. And that's another one of those kind of like Groundhog Day, like repeating over and over again, though they're varying different films. This is sci-fi. That's more or less kind of like a horror slasher with a little bit of sci-fi thrown in. But I do enjoy that one. So if you like Live, Die, Repeat, Edge of Tomorrow, you might want to try out those films because they were really fun, had some good comedy in them. And if you want to check out those reviews for both of those, I did my 4K versus Blu-ray image comparisons on both those films as well exclusively here on my YouTube channel. And that's available for you to watch as well. But the film itself really gets you into the characters. You grow to like Tom Cruise. And to be honest with you at the beginning, I really didn't like him at all. And that's where I kind of thought the film was so well done because it starts off where you kind of just don't like the guy. And then you grow to like his character and see what he's going through. And that's where the writing was so well done in this film as well. And I love, as I said, the universe they built for this. Now it is rated PG-13, but it really didn't have anything too extreme in it at all. And it just was so well done and so fun to watch that if you haven't given this a try as a sci-fi movie, you're really missing out on a gem of a sci-fi classic. Now, getting to my review score. As most of you know from watching this review, I really enjoyed the film. But my big thing was, is was this worth spending the money? You know, anywhere between 23 up to $30 for this film to get it on 4K Ultra HD. That's what we're all really here for. Well, for my review score for Edge of Tomorrow, Live, Die, Repia on 4K Ultra HD, this gets an outstanding 9.7. It is a must buy that you need to add to your collection. The Dolby Atmos track on this was so enjoyable. If you've got Dolby Atmos, like I said, that's worth the price of admission alone. But because it is a 2K upscale from a digital intermediate, it still looked really good for a 2K upscale. And that's rare. I mean, a lot of the times, some of the 2K upscales, if they're not done right, just don't look that much better than the original Blu-rays. Well, in this case, it does look great. As you've noticed from those screenshot comparisons between that Blu-ray and this 4K Ultra HD, this really is a must buy. Image, sound, make this such a worthy upgrade that it's something you wanna to add to your collection and support, especially because the film is great overall. I've done some of these Dolby Atmos reviews previously like Moonfall, 
and I enjoyed Moonfall, but it's nowhere near like a cult classic sci-fi film like this is. Yes, I enjoyed Moonfall, and the Dolby Atmos track on Moonfall was outstanding. And if you want to check out that review, it's available here on my YouTube channel as well. But the Atmos track sounded great, the visuals look good on that, but this is a much better sci-fi movie overall, so that even though that has reference quality on that disc, the film itself nowhere near as good as Edge of Tomorrow is. This really is one of those films you'll want to watch this over and over again, and it's a worthwhile upgrade and is a must-buy for you to add to your collection. Now, if you enjoy all this content I work hard to create here on my YouTube channel, you can always join my Collector's VIP Club. That's the best way to possibly support this YouTube channel. And that's the only way that I can keep these lights on and keep creating all this exclusive content for all of you to watch and enjoy. When you join that Collector's VIP Club, there's tons of exclusive perks and benefits, as well as exclusive video content that is only available for my exclusive VIP Club members. I just recently did a huge comparison review that you'll only find here on my channel of all the $6 million sets that have been remastered on Blu-ray, doing image comparisons between those, doing all my analysis, testing, and data between those. That's available right now in my Collector's VIP Club. So when you join that, you'll have access to watch that right now and all future videos that will be coming out in that Collector's Club. Now also, if you wanna support this channel, you can always give a super thanks down below. That's just like giving a tip. So the only way I can continue to create all of these is through all of your support. So when you give that, it's just like when you go to a restaurant and you give a tip for all of their hard work. You can give a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, whatever you can afford on each video you watch of mine through that super thanks button down below. And I really do appreciate all of your love and support that all of you have given over the years. It's just one of these things like I've been explaining. I've been trying to find ways to be able to afford to keep creating these videos because they are so expensive with the software and all of the time it takes me to put into these videos. That's why just like Edge of Tomorrow, it took me an extra week to get this out behind everybody else because I have to do all of the data that I pull off of the disc and all of my testing, which takes so much extra time and work. So if you enjoy this, please make sure to join either the Collector's VIP Club or to give a super thanks down below. And if you decide to pick this up and add this to your collection, make sure to click through the link in the description section below or as a pinned comment, it takes you straight out to Amazon and I've made it nice and easy for all of you. So when you click on that, it's at no extra cost to you, but it does help to support this YouTube channel just a few pennies and it does help out just a little bit. I had a fun time with this one today. As always, I hope all of you have a blessed day and I always have something new and really exciting coming out very soon.